are you new to SAS or maybe you're just getting started with it, you're getting frustrated by it, you're seeing stuff with the command line that seems scary or not too sure what it's all about or anything like that or maybe you've started using it but you're not very comfortable or you want something that's a little bit better than just watching your files because then you have to refresh your page every time. Well, if that's the case, this video is just for you. I'm not looking at what SAS is, I'm not looking at how it works, I'm just looking at how we can get up and running with it in a really, really simple way. And we're gonna start by looking at just getting it up and running so it's watching our files, but then we're gonna build it out a little bit more using the parcel bundler, just because it's so easy to do. It's gonna let us have auto refresh, so you hit save, everything's done. It's gonna compile your SAS into your CSS, but it's gonna do a lot more than that too. Uh, Parcel's really good at optimizations and a whole bunch of other stuff. It really is just a really wonderful way to work. And we're gonna see how easy it is. Even though we will be diving into the command line, we wanna simplify things as much as possible and make it really easy to understand. And we'll see that it's not actually so scary after all. All right, so I'm in here, I'm in, I'm in VS Code and it's a completely blank folder. There's nothing in here. It is important for this that you're opening a folder and not an individual file. And the way I did that is just, I have all my files here. I just right clicked and I had the option to open with code. If you don't see that option, um, and that should be on, doesn't matter what system you're on, but if you don't see it, you can always just go to open folder here and find your folder. And if you'd like to get that, you'd have to just reinstall VS Code and you can, um, you have to, there's a checkbox option somewhere that gives you that option of having it on right click. Now, before we get in and start doing anything, there is one tool that we're going to need and you might have it, you might not have it. So to check before we get it, if you already have it or not, it's NPM, uh, which requires Node.js. So you're gonna have to open your terminal for this. You can see I did that here inside of VS Code, which is one of the reasons I really like VS Code is it has the built-in one. Uh, if not, if you're using Atom or something else that doesn't have a terminal, if you're on Windows, you could use PowerShell. If you're on Mac, you can just use the terminal. Um, or if you have another one that you prefer using, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, uh, but any of them like that will work. And if you wanna see if you have what you need, you can do npm hyphen v. And let's just hit return, and it's gonna tell me what version of npm I have, which is 6.14.9. If you get an error, it's gonna tell you it doesn't know what npm is or anything like that. All you have to do then is head on over to nodejs.org and you can install the latest version of Node.js. And when you install Node.js, it's going to come with NPM with it. It's part of the whole thing. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. So it's sort of a, a little bundle that you get all together. We're not gonna be doing a lot here. It might look a little bit scary, but honestly, it's super, super easy. So you just click the link here. It's gonna go through an installation just like any other software that you might install on your computer. And then you can come back to here and be good to go. After you've installed it, you can just do that check, V, and see if you get anything. And then you can write clear if you wanna get rid of everything and just start back over. Um, and you can see one of the nice things with being in my terminal here is I'm in the right one. So I'm in my folder that's on my desktop. So I'm in this, this one right here. And what I wanna do before anything else, and this is not part of the SAS documentation, but honestly, it's a really important step to make the project and future projects you're doing a little bit more reusable. Um, I'm gonna do an npm init hyphen y. Let's make that a little bigger before I hit, um, there we go, uh, make it really big for us so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And so it's an npm init y, which means init means we're going to initialize an npm, just means initialize. And the y, when you do that normally, it asks you a bunch of questions. So the hyphen y just sets the default so you don't have to answer any of the questions. And very quickly what it does is it adds this package.json file here. And if you're not familiar with this, it's just a basic, you know, you have the name, so it's using my folder name, but you can come up with your project name right here, what version of the project, if you want a description. Scripts, we're gonna play in here a little bit later. Uh, keywords, author, and the license. So nothing that we have to worry too much about at this stage. Uh, but this is a really important step just to get things rocking and rolling um, and getting SAS working. You don't need to do this initialization, but it really does help. Again, as your project grows, you're gonna be happy that you have this. And you'll see why um, as we get into the second part of this video. Now we wanna add SAS to this project. So to be able to do that, what we're gonna do is an npm install SAS hyphen hyphen save dev. And what the save dev means is it's gonna add it to this package.json file. And that's for if somebody else is working on it or you switch to another computer, or anything like that and you want to start things up it knows that this is here so that's really useful because then it's automatically when you start the project it's going to install everything you need to get things working again and you don't have to remember all these different things that you're going to install along the way 
So we're saying npm go find SAS. And this the SAS like this is a JavaScript version of Dart SAS. So it's the up-to-date version of it. And the save dev is just telling it to save it into here so we know um, in the future that this is part of our project. And when you do this, it shouldn't take too long, but it does take a little bit. And it's installing a whole bunch. And you'll see you'll get this node modules that shows up. And the node modules is all the different things that are required for SAS to actually work. And if you have other things, like we're going to add parcel later, it's going to add a whole bunch of other stuff to there as well. Um, so there we go, no vulnerabilities, which is always nice as well. I'm just going to write clear here. And we're good to go, except let's just go take a look. And you can see in my JSON file here, it added dev dependencies and it added SAS right there. So it's just saying that this project requires this version of SAS. And this little carrot here means this version of SAS or higher. Um, should be fine, but this is like the minimum version that will be acceptable for this project. Um, and now we want to get SAS working. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here just so we can see what we're doing uh, because we have SAS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in my folder and I'm going to make a new folder called SRC, which is my source folder. This is not the public facing files, but this is all the files that um, are sort of for dev development purposes, right? <laughs> and in my SRC folder, I'm going to make a new one called SCSS because that's where my SAS can live. And then inside of there, I'm going to make a main.scss file. And let's just put a little bit here. So this is a nice way just to, I always test things to make sure um, everything's working. So right here, I can do my body and then I can do a background of, you guessed it, red. And right now nothing's working, nothing's happening. It's not compiling. I don't have any actual CSS red. Um, but what we can do here now, because we haven't SAS installed in this project, so to be able to get it to watch, what we're going to write is SAS hyphen hyphen watch like this. And there's two different ways that you can get the SAS watch to actually watch your files. And by watch, it means look at a file and take that file and turn it into regular CSS. So we have to tell it where to look for. So I'm going to go into my source folder in there into my SCSS folder. And then we have two different options. We can either tell it just watch this folder or we can say look at my main dot SCSS S, we're missing a, a C in there, S, C, S, S, there we go. Um, and then we can tell it from there what to do with it. So I could tell it to take this file and go somewhere else and turn that into a, instead of a main.css, maybe I want a style.css. But what I'm actually going to do is leave it like this and put a colon, and then I'm going to go dist slash CSS. And this is just going to be, you know, this could be public instead of dist, which is distribution. It could be whatever you want, but this is the dist is the one that's going to be public facing. So this is where all the finished files go. Um, so again, this could be public or whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to hit return on that. And you can see that it compiled this to my main.css in there and SAS is watching. So let's actually go and check that out. Let's go. You can see it actually made a dist folder and we have a main.css in here. And let's split this apart and we can double check if it's actually working. We can change my red here to be F00. I should hit save here and right away you can see it updated there and it is seeing the changes right here. And every time we make a change here, let's bring this back to red. When I hit save, you can see that it's compiled it again. So it's working. Everything is fine. Everything is working. Everything is good to go. But there's a small problem. And that problem right now is that usually what happens is you build your entire site over in here in the source world. And right now, if I had an HTML file, so it's in my source, let's add in an index.html. And so this index.html is living here, but SAS isn't paying attention to this. SAS is going to compile to my distribution, but it's not going to do anything with the HTML. If I had JavaScript, it's not going to touch my JavaScript. It's just going to let everything just like hang out and not do anything, which I sort of want an HTML file that's going to end up in there. And if I have any JavaScript, I want my JavaScript to end up in there. So how can we do that? Ah, that's where parcel comes in. So I'm going to cancel this. We're going to do a clear and we're going to come in here with another NPM install. And this time I'm going to write parcel bundler like this. Um, now, I also want to save dev this, so save dev, or if you want to save keystrokes, save dev is also just a single hyphen and a capital D. So whichever one you want to do will have the same results, but we'll do the save dev the long way, because why not? And let's hit return on that now. Now, this one might take a little bit longer to install just because, whoa, we got an error. Oh, I misspelled bundler. Let's try that again. So let's do a clear. Um, so we'll do that again, npm install parcel bundler got the end before I think bundler and once again save dev and let's see if this one works 
There we go, it's working this time, good. Um, so as I said, this one's a little bit bigger, heavier than SAS, so this will take a little bit longer to install. So I'm just gonna let this go and I'll see you once it's done. All right, so mine is all done and ready to go. Parcel is installed. So if I go and look at my node modules now, there's probably a lot more stuff in there. Uh, and if I go into my package here, I should see parcel is here. So in my dev dependencies, that's been added in there. So that's really cool. Uh, so let's close that because we don't need it anymore. And I guess it's not really cool, but whatever. Um, and the cool thing with parcel is it just figures things out. So what I'm going to do is in my index explanation point tab to get what I need. Let's close my CSS file. Um, and actually, I'm going to I'm going to delete this distribution folder for now just to show you how parcel works. So that whole thing should be removed. Actually, I want to remove everything there. There we go. OK, so let's just call this a SAS starter project. And the thing that's really interesting with parcel is uh, when you use it, the you actually want to tell it to link not to where your compiled CSS file will be, but you want to tell it to link to your SCSS file. And that's how parcel knows that you're using SAS on your project. So that's really interesting. Um, so here, relative to here, I'm going into an SCSS, whoops, SC, SCSS folder, and I have my main.scss. So it's relative to this index file right there. And I can, you know, that's all I need to have set up here. So we could take some time to tell Parcel where to look every time we want Parcel to do something. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to go into our NPM scripts now, uh, our package here, which is our package.json and our, uh, the scripts right here. We don't need a test script, so we can delete that. And in here, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a new one, and it's going to be called dev. And what my dev one is going to do is run Parcel. So we're going to do Parcel. And we're going to tell it where it should be looking. Whoops, this needs to be in quotation marks. Parcel. And so where should parcel look? It's going to look in, at my index.html that's inside of my source folder right here. Um, so I could run that right here. I could write this in and it would work. But it makes it a little bit annoying to have to remember where things are and the file name you want and all of that. So we can do that. And so the other one we want is our build, build like that. And then what we want is that it's going to look for, or it's going to run parcel and it's going to do a build source slash index.html, just like that. Um, and there's a small difference between these, so we'll see what they are in a second. And so dev build, there we go. We're ready to go and we can use that. So now what I can do is write in npm run dev. And it knows that I want to run this script that is right there. So let's hit return on that. So it's saying npm, go look in your scripts folder and run this right here. And look at that built in. And look over here in my dist folder that, that this is parcel just created this dist folder here. There's an index file. And look at that. There's actually nothing in there because I don't think I saved this file. So let's hit save on this. It's building the site. Oh, and it actually compiled my CSS now. And look at all those things that just showed up. Isn't that really cool? So because it was linking to this main.scss file, it knew that it had to go and grab the, this and compile it into regular CSS on its own. And the wonderful thing with this is, is opened up a dev server that we can use. So I'm going to control click on that to open it up in its own little window. And you can see that right here. So let's get this set up so we can actually see what's happening. And if I come here in my body and I make a change, uh, hello world, hit save. It's automatically there. I don't have to refresh my browser to get that to show up. Or let's come here and change this to pink. So our eyes stop bleeding. And I just hit save and it updates right away. I don't have to do anything else, which is so fabulous and so fun and so easy. Um, and it's just going to keep running, keep watching. Parcel does more than just this, though. It's doing a lot more. So I'm going to link down in the description uh, to Parcel's documentation so you can see all of the amazing things that you can do with it um, because it will make some JavaScript and some other things along the way as well. So just so you know what it's doing, what it can do with your JavaScript if you're using JavaScript in your files. Um, but it's really cool, really easy to get up and running with it. And here it's always doing that. If I ever need to end this, I can just do a control C and ask me, yes, I want to terminate. And now I'm, I'm back out. Now the big difference between the NPM run and the NPM, uh, sorry, the dev and the build, the dev one's going to watch your server and any changes you make is going to happen. Build doesn't do that. Uh, but the run, uh, the, the watching one or the dev one goes much faster. It's not doing any optimizations. It's just like, boom, it's making your site as quickly as possible. So you can keep that thing going. If you do the build, it's going to optimize your site a lot more. So it's very slow to run, but the final output of what it's making is much more optimized. It's going to run like CSS nano auto prefixer, 
Uh, I think there's a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff too. It, it optimizes things, but it means that it builds things much slower. So when you're just doing development work, you want to be using your npm run run dev, and then it's going to do the development server. And then when you're ready to push to production or ready to put something online, you're going to do your run build and then get a more optimized final one. And it's your dist folder that's going to have, and it'd be in your dist folder where everything that's ready to go should show up in there. Now, one last thing that's really important is I'm going to be putting this up on GitHub and I would recommend that you get your stuff up on GitHub in general. It's a nice way to do version control. And also if you're working in teams is sort of a must. So another thing we will want in here is a dot git ignore and the git ignore means, you know, ignore these files when they're going up and I want to add known modules uh, with an S to my git ignore file because I don't want to overload my, you know, Git doesn't want all that stuff in there. And you don't want to have to download that every single time uh, when you're forking off or when you're downloading it. It's just, it's giant files that are being hosted for nothing. Um, but that is, if you're coming in with something that's already been set up, you're not going to have the node modules in there. So before you start, the very first thing you want to do is an NPM install. And what that's going to do is it's going to look inside this package. It's going to look in any dev dependencies or main dependencies that you have, and it's going to download everything into your node modules folder that it needs to be able to function properly. So if you're downloading from the link down below that has everything here already set up, just use the NPM install first. And then after that, you can start going, uh, in the final one, you'll also see a readme that has a little bit of documentation. So if you forget that at the time, just make sure you read the readme. Uh, before you get started and you should be good to go. So I really hope you like that. I hope you learned a couple of things along the way there and you have now have SAS up and running. Now, as I said, this video is not diving into what SAS is, how it works, all of that. So if you're looking at learning more about SAS, there are links to other videos down below, but also I am looking at relaunching my SAS course. I did create a SAS course a while back and since then SAS has completely changed. So I'm re-recording the entire thing. They switched over to what we call Dart SAS now and they added modules to it and it, it's grown a lot as a language. So I, it just needs a complete re-record as I dive into that new material and then work with that. So I am working on that as we speak. Now this could be from if you're just starting with SAS or you've been working with it for a little bit, but you feel like you're just scratching the surface and you wanna really explore it and up your game with it. So if either one of those is the case and you're interested in updates on the course and being the first to know when it finally does launch, there is a link just down below where you can sign up for updates on that. Thank you very much for watching this. I really do hope that you enjoyed it and you'll be able to use this build uh, in your future projects. A really big thank you to my patrons for helping support me every single month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.